Ah, okay, right. I think that's it. Says live. Are we live? Uh, yay, okay, there we go. Sorry, I thought I was live for the past like five minutes. Ah, right, so we've got five people watching. Hello, five people. Um, just double check that we are. Cool, six people watching. Hello, six people. Uh, yeah, sorry for that delay there. I was under the impression I was live. I wasn't, I was just looking at a preview. Um, cool, yeah, so I've got it up on my phone. Nice one, okay. Let's get some stuff going. So today we're going to be going over a fair amount of stuff, um, all towards making this one scene uh, with a Dodge Challenger car. Uh, that's kind of the end product we're going to be working towards this scene here. Uh, I have done a little thing at the end. We've got this here. Uh, we're also going to we're also going to do something like that if we uh, if we get the time. Uh, okay. So most of the stuff we're going to be doing is in cycles as well, instead of EV, um, because we did a lot of EV last week. We get a lot of better results in cycles. That animation is in EV just because render times are quicker, uh, but everything else will be in cycles. Okay, so let's break down the kind of finished scene. I'll open up the blend file here. Okay, let's get to the layout view. Cool, so I've left everything pretty much as default as possible. Um, so everything should look exactly as it would on uh, your your Blender as soon as you open it up in 2.8, obviously. Okay, so as you can see, if we just look at the layout view here, we're not working with that many things. So we've got this Dodge Challenger car, which is a model I downloaded from Turbo Squid. We've got uh, our camera here. And we've got a ground plane, which is our road. We've got this road barrier, which we're going to model. We're going to model that ourselves. That's not an asset. And then we've got another ground plane beneath the road, which is uh, our grass that's beneath the road. So if I come into the material preview here. Okay, so that's kind of what it's looking like. And then rendered over here. There we go. Okay, so we just look. That's what we're looking at in EV. And then if we come over to cycles, that's what we're looking at for our kind of final uh, photo reel render. Uh, all right. Well, let's just get started then. So I'm just going to make a new blend file. Save that. Cool. And this is. How we're going to start so i'm going to press a select everything x and delete everything so just a x enter delete everything so we're not going to need any of that stuff i'm going to name the collection we're working with here uh just scene uh just because we're going to have a couple of collections we're going to want to be able to monitor them come up and use this filter icon and turn this one on and that's our selectable one so that lets us lock stuff so that we can't accidentally mess around with anything okay we don't really need to look at the animation tab because we're going to be working with a still frame at the minute. I'm just going to make that a bit bigger so I can see more over here. Okay, so first we need our road. That's what we're going to start with. So I'm just going to make a new plane. So Shift A for the add menu, mesh plane, and we get that. Now I'm going to scale it along the Y axis to make it a bit bigger. So S, Y, 2, that's a scale along the Y axis, double S, Y, 2. And I'm going to go along the x-axis uh, about eight times, so S, X, 8. Uh, and I'm going to double that, so S, X, 2. So now we've got a much bigger plane, and that's going to be our road. Uh, okay. So if we jump into our rendered view now, let's just stick with Eevee uh, and add in a sun. So Shift, A, Light, and Sun. Let's bring that up a bit. So 
g for grab, z for up on the z axis, and we can bring that up. Uh, I'm going to bring that over here a bit. I'm not going to explain exactly everything I'm doing because I'm going to rely on some pre-existing knowledge, but I will try and you know, say as much stuff as what I'm doing as possible. Now, if you do need help, put it in the chat. I've got it up here on my phone, so I should be able to see uh, anything you put in the chat. Or drop me a message on Messenger, and I should see that come up as well. Uh, okay, cool. So let's just texture this road straight away. So we're going to be using uh, PBR textures. Last week, um, we did everything, just textures we're making ourselves. This week, we're going to use PBR textures, which are textures that are already made, um, and we can just chuck them straight in. So they use a whole bunch of different files to get loads of different data to make really nice textures. So instead of them just being images, they've got height data and bump data and reflection data and all this stuff that we can use to uh, just get nice looking textures. In the stream chat, I've put a bunch of links to all the different textures and stuff we're going to be using. There's only four assets that you would want to download. Um, we're going to start off with this road texture here, which I got from CG Bookcase. Um, this is a really, really lovely texture. I use it all the time. Um, so the ones you're going to want to download is just any one of these columns. Um, I think I'm using the 4K ones. Um, so you want to download the AO one, base color, height, mass, normal, roughness, etc. Uh, just all of those, then put them into one folder. Okay, so I've got all my textures in uh, my assets folder here. Uh, and, or is it in the other one? Oh, it turns out I've got two folders, that's great. Textures. I trust you're going to have better file structure than I am. 3D textures. <laughs> there we go. Three folders. And I've got row texture here. I'm just going to copy the address where that is. And you can see I've got all the different maps of the same thing here. Come into Blender, select our plane, go to materials, make a new material. Uh, and then over base color. Uh, no, actually, no, we don't need to do that. Go to the shading tab, sorry. Uh, and in here is where we're going to import our PBR texture. So if you've got the node wrangler add on, this is really easy. You can just select your principal DF um, uh, material, press Control Shift T, and I'll bring up this file viewer, and select all of the files, and it will just import them already as a, as a PBR texture. If you don't have that, add-on that's the node wrangler add-on it's really easy to get uh, you can just come up to your preferences uh, add-ons search for node wrangler and just turn it on there it's already in blender or you can spend ages painstakingly uh, setting it up properly like manually but that takes ages so you can see here we've got our road imported uh, and it's looking pretty good so if we come over to our fully rendered view yeah, so we've got our road in. Now there's a couple of things we're going to do to this road just to live it up a bit more. So firstly, you can see it's quite stretched out. So if we come down to our mapping nodes over here uh, and mess around with these scale options, we can change how much it repeats. So along the X, Y, and Z. Um, bear in mind, if you go below one, then you're not going to get anything. See, that's what it looks like if you put them all to zero, because they need to be uh, at minimum one. Uh, okay, so along the X, I'm going to increase that a bit so we get bigger scale. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our road here. Okay, and then between the roughness map, which is this image here, and the roughness connection on the prints board, I'm going to add a new node. So that's Shift A to add a new node, then search and add a color ramp node. Bear in mind, color is spelled the American way, just to throw you off. Uh, and if you just hover over a connection in the shader editor, you can just drop a new node in there and it will automatically fill in those connections. And what the color ramp node does between the, uh, for the roughness is it just changes the roughness value because we can't change it in here anymore because it's taking the information from the image. So we can affect that here. So. If I bring up this gradient 
all the way up to the top, you'll change you'll notice a change in the roughness. So it will get more wet or more dry. Cool. So if I bring it over here, then it looks really wet. It looks not that rough. And the further over here, the more dry it will make the road. So I'm going to make it fairly, uh, fairly wet. It's a bit a few dry patches. Okay, uh, and then now there's we're going to use a little uh, trick that I saw in, in Hubert's new video, uh, just to add some like warbles, which we're going to use a few amount of times uh, in this. So if we come over to the normal map here, which is where we're getting our height data from for the map, add in a mix RGB node, then add in a Musgrave texture, oh, not there, and a uh, bump node. Let's get some more space over here. So let's plug the Musgrave into the height data of the bump and then bring the normal of the bump into this one. And you'll see we get this extra texture coming over the road. So that's it without it. And then when we add it in, we get that. And we can change around with these values here just to change the look of that. So it kind of makes the road look a bit dirtier, a bit more uh, gravelly. Um, I really like the way it looks. You know, it's obviously something you don't have to do, but I'm quite a fan of the way that looks. Kind of brings brings out these cracks as well, makes the road road look a more used, a bit older. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty much us done with our road texture now. Uh, pause it. I'll, I'll zoom in a bit if you need to pause or take a screenshot so you can see that map a bit clearer. Oh, there's our output over there. Yeah, so grab a screenshot if you need of that. Okay, cool. So now we're going to change the shape of our road. So if we come back over to the layout tab, we're going to add a bend in the road. Um, and that's essentially so that it doesn't just look, you know, just add something more to the, uh, to the actual scene. Okay, so if we come up to our road uh, and jump into edit mode so just tab and that will bring you into edit mode and you can change the shape of the mesh um, I'm going to just add a bunch of edge loops um, and you do that by hovering over your item or your object press ctrl r and that bring in the edge loop then if you use your scroll wheel on your mouse you can add here more edge loops then click and place them cool I'm going to use the box select which is B uh, I'm going to grab all these edges down here. So I'm making sure I'm selecting edges, not faces. Uh, I'm just going to bring them down here. And then I'm going to de deselect edge by edge. Uh, and just add in this bend in the road. And we will clean this up so it doesn't look as flat. Don't go too much with your movements, otherwise you'll add in a bit too much warp into the uh, into the texture that we've got on the road. Okay, then you just kind of go between all these, clean that up a bit. Make sure you don't have too drastic changes. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to grab all these edges in the middle of the road and press control B to bevel them. And that's just going to make our a bit clearer. I'm going to select them all again and just bevel them a bit more. So we just get a bit of a, a neater bend. And you can always come back and just change the You probably could put this on a curve uh, and that would make it a bit smoother. Uh, this is the way I did it earlier, so 
And I kind of forgot about the whole curve thing. We will use that later though. Uh, I can't see anything in the chat. Uh, okay, we added a new camera. So again, just shift A camera uh, and let's bring that to the edge of our road over here. If we go to our transform properties, which are these ones here, zero out all the rotations. Uh, and then position the camera however you need it. Uh, sorry, position the camera so that we can get it up onto the road and sort of match uh, match this angle that we're looking at here. Oh man, my internet sucks. Okay. Uh, so let's bring that up. Out there. Okay, I'm going to go to my camera view. If I press N, that will bring up this properties panel over here. Go to view, lock camera to view, and now as I move around the space, it will bring my camera with me. So I'm going to go around here ish. Let's take a look at that again. Cool. So we can kind of see the bend up there. And the car's kind of around here. Okay. So let's unlock that so we don't move it by accident. If we come up to our render settings over here, I'm going to change from 1920 to 1920, sorry, 1920 by 1080 to 1920 by 810. So, so we get a thinner uh, sort of anamorphic uh, angle. Okay. So if we were to look now at our render, that's kind of what we're looking at. So we get, we're getting close. We <laughs> I say this has got a lot more to do. Okay, uh, so now we're going to add in a HDRI. HDRIs are like 360 images that you can take on a shortcut to import the textures. Uh, <laughs> I'm having to look at the chat now from Kieran's. Uh, okay, shortcut to import the textures when you've got the Node Wrangler add-on. It's uh, Control Shift T. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm not really seeing the chat. Uh, yeah, Control Shift T, and that will um, bring you up the menu to import um, textures. Then you go to the place where you downloaded the textures, select every single one, so the normal, the AO, the roughness, all of them, and it will drop them all in. Also, make sure before you press Control Shift T that you've got um, your principled shader selected. So select that, and then Control Shift T, and select all of them, and then import. Anyway, sorry, I said didn't see that earlier. Uh, my internet is like 2.5 meg here, so it's it's really slow. Okay, uh, let's get back to it. Just gonna maybe change that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna add in a HDRI, which is a 360 degree image, um, which gives you um, gives your scene like a world in a way. So if you come over to your world settings in your properties panel, which is this one here, looks like an earth with a, like a strike through it. Uh, you get all these different settings for your world settings. So you can just change that. You can change the color of the background if you want. Um, so you can have it blue if you want, and you can see that affects the, the lighting of the scene. So you get some really abstract stuff by messing around with that if you want. Uh, let's just put that back to white. Um, we're going to use a HDRI to do the same thing um, and get all that reflection data, but from a real world 360 degree image. So if over color you press that little circle uh, and go to environment texture. 
So it'll go purple, that's because we've not got any texture linked. Then come down to open and go find your HDRI. Um, so you can use any HDRI. I think for this, for this tutorial I've used this one, HDRI Moonless Golf, which you get from HDRI Haven. Um, there is a link for it in the chat. Um, it's a really nice one. HDRI Haven, there's loads of really nice HDRIs. You use whichever one you want. You're not restricted at all. You can use whatever one you want. Same for the road. You can use any road texture you want, any, anything you want to make the scene your own. Um, okay, so I've got that saved here, I believe. Nope. HDRIs. There we go. So Moonless Golf. There you go. And now that will load that up into the scene. So if you now look around your scene, you've got an entire uh, 4K you know, 360 degree image of, of the world. Cool. Um, so now we need some ground uh, beneath our road because if we look, you know, it just kind of, the world just drops off. So what we're going to do is add in a new plane. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really cautious now. I'm trying to monitor anything. Um, let's see if our chat is refreshing. Ah, there we go. You got it sorted. Nice one, Ben. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So shift A mesh plane. So we've got a new plane. Uh, I'm going to S8, scale that by eight times, um, and then just kind of move that around so it covers our road. There we go. What's that one? Oh man, why is my phone choosing now to pop up with everything? Okay, so there we go. Now what you'll see as well is if you come down to the road, because they're at the exact same intersection, and because they're both planes at the exact same size, they're intersecting with each other and they're clipping. Um, and the easiest way to do that is you can just grab that plane and move that down just a tiny, tiny bit so it stops clipping. You don't want to go too far down because you want them to be on perceptually the same level. Um, but not actually at the exact same spot in the world. Cool. Okay, so if we go to our camera now, you can see we've got some ground uh, beneath that. So from our camera view, let's just scale it so that it's not bigger than what our camera can actually see. Uh, and the reason for that is because we don't want to be rendering anything that we can't actually see. Um, because otherwise we're just wasting resources. So you can see over here, I've got loads of space on that plane that's not being used. So I'm just going to go to edit mode, tap over to that, control R, add an edge loop. Uh, I'm going to add that back here, face select. So that's over here, or you can just press three, grab that face. And I'm just going to delete that face. So X delete face. Uh, cool. So we've still got loads of space. I'm just going to stay in the camera view here. Uh, let's go back to edit mode, add a new edge loop. And let's just look. So you can take that to about there before we uh, lose anything in camera view. So X, delete face. There we go. Uh, and let's just bring this edge up a bit as well. So edit mode, grab that edge, G, X. There we go. Cool. So now we're only really using stuff that is uh, actually visible by the camera. Uh, I think we can probably get rid of some stuff over here as well. So if we add an edge loop like there, we can get rid of that face. And Cool. Uh, and that's why my ground plane looked so weird in the last one, because we're just getting rid of stuff that we're not going to use. Okay. Now with this ground plane, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the PBR texture in that, but we're going to use a different texture. We're going to use like a muddy ground texture. So, uh, oh, wrong tab. Blah, blah, blah. So I use this one, Brown Mud Leaves from Texture Haven. Again, great site. You've also got CG Bookcase as well or um, textures.com. Get it from anywhere. This is the one I've used. Um, there is a link for that in the chat as well. Um, just press download all maps. Uh, I usually go for the 4K ones. I'm using 2K because my internet's so bad. Um, yeah, download all those. And then come over to your materials window, add a new material, pop over to the shading at the top. Let's uh, bring this up so we can see more of it. Select your principal BSDF, Control Shift T, uh, 
go back a bit. And we want brown mud leaves there. So select all of them. So set up one, shift down to the bottom one, get all of them, import them. And nice and neatly, we get that texture set up. So if we look at it from the top, we've got our brown mud leaves. Uh, but what you might notice now is uh, they're, they're really big. They're, like, they look like really big leaves. So we need to change the scale of them, same as we did for the road. So before we do that, because we've got, it's not a normal plane anymore because we've kind of add, added in the edges. So if you go to edit mode, just tab select everything, press U and that will bring you up a UV mapping menu and press unwrap. And that's going to unwrap the UV uh, just to make it a bit more seamless so we get better results with, uh, with our texture that's mapped onto the plane. Sorry, I'm really bad at explaining stuff which is ironic. Okay, uh, and then we can just change up the scale here. Um, make sure you do that proportionately though, otherwise you'll end up with, you know, funky looking textures. So I'm gonna go two by two. When you're on one, if you, uh, you know, put in your number, then press tab, it will take you straight down to the next value. Let's try three by three. So they're still, they still look really big. Let's go six by six. I think that looks okay. Yeah, I think that will pass. We can't really see it anyway when we're in this, and we can't. We're not really going to be able to see it in our final render, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but you know, you kind of want it to look as best as you can. Okay, so I'm going for a nighttime render, um, and these leaves are too green for me. They're too bright for it for me to feel like it's it's nighttime. Or I was originally going for nighttime render. I think I actually ended up daytime. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, okay, but you know, you can't see it anyway. I want them to be a bit darker, or maybe you want them brighter. Depends how you want it. But anyway, uh, to change the brightness, if you go between your base color um, input, add a new RGB curves node, pop that in there, and then this works just like curves in any other program. And you can just change that so I'm going to make them a bit darker add this simple curve in there there we go so now I've just got them a little bit darker cool and that's us done with our ground texture now so yeah our ground is pretty much finished we're done with the ground let's come back to our layout so now we need to add in the actual car so we can start framing that up. So the car model is from TurboSquid. It's a free model, um, this one here, free Dodge Challenger from TurboSquid. Really nice model. Um, it does have a few issues with texture links and stuff, but it's nothing we can't sort out. We're gonna do all that. Um, so you can download that there. There is a link to that in the chat. Um, or you can just go on TurboSquid, search car, and then filter to free and it will come up. So download that and it will download as a blend file in a zip folder, extract the zip, uh, and then we can import it. So the way we're going to import it is the same as we did last week where we imported materials. Uh, we're going to append it because it's in a blend file. So go to file, append. Now I'm not the best at this, so I might be doing this slightly wrong, which might be why I'm getting issues, um, but this oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, so file, append, then go to where you've saved it and extracted it. Uh, Dodge stream scene. Uh, is that where I put it, or did I put it in the assets? 3D assets. Dodge challenger. There we go. So yeah, you got that Dodge challenger there. So select that blend file, press append, and then it will bring up everything that's in that. Go to the objects section and grab everything that's for the car. So kind of select all of it. Then, you know, we don't need the camera from the scene. We don't need the sun. We don't need the plane. Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah. So deselect those and press append again, and then it will show up in your scene. There we go. So let's drop down. To, it's still brought in the plane and the sun. That's weird. Okay. So let's just bring that up to ground level. 
get rid of that plane, get rid of the sun. Uh, cool. So let's add a new collection. We press that new collection button up there. Let's call that uh, Challenger or Car or whatever. Um, I'm going to lock using the restriction toggles the camera, the ground, which I'll just rename that quickly now actually as well, and the sun. Then if I press A, oh, we've got another plane as well. That one. If I press A, it will select everything to do with the car. Uh, so what we're going to do is add a empty plane axis because the car is loads of different objects. Uh, select everything, deselect the empty, reselect it, and go to object, parent, object. Uh, make sure they're in the same collection. Uh, and then everything will parent to that empty. And we can move that over here and kind of start framing it up but this is this is what happened to me before as well it's quite strange the interior of the car for some reason when you parent it um, decides to change position so you just need to bring that up to uh, get to the appropriate position so if you use the box select tool you can just go through and kind of select all the bits of the interior that got accidentally misplaced there. And then, yeah, just maybe use the wireframe mode so you can go through it. Uh, and yeah, just bring those up to match where they should be. And do this before you start changing the scale of anything, because otherwise it will be really difficult to match, because that's what I did. <laughs> uh, so about, about kind of there ish we don't want it to clip through the car yeah that looks about right yeah cool okay so let's call that empty uh, challenger master and bring that into the challenger uh, collection so now when we move around this empty, it brings the whole car with it. So we don't have to worry about accidentally uh, misplacing anything. Let's just check the chat. Seem okay. Okay. Uh, so now using that null, careful not to accidentally select the car, always select the null. Uh, we can just rotate that, scale it down. Let's use the uh, material previews and get it to the appropriate scale for the scene. So it needs to fit inside one of these lanes. Like that. And now let's bring it down to ground level. Working with nulls will be much easier for you if you've worked in After Effects before. Uh, they work really similarly. Okay. And now let's just bring that up to there. I'm going to make a new window, so by coming up to this top right here, dragging that over, I guess, new window, I'm going to use that for my camera view. So I'm going to bring the car around here, I'm going to rotate it, oh, not that way, kind of, kind of like that, bring it a bit closer, let's try and match, yeah. That looks about right. Maybe a bit closer, just enough so we get some of that uh, light bar at the back in frame. Cool. And what I also did was just rotate this one wheel out to add a bit more, a uh, bit more look to the scene. Don't need to worry about this one because we don't see it. If you don't see it, really handy tip for 3D. If you don't see it, don't you don't really have to worry about it. So reschedule my delivery. Okay, weird. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Keep getting distracted. Yeah, if you don't see it, you don't need to worry about it. Like delete it or don't bother moving it because it's just time you don't need to spend. Cool. So that's our frame that we're looking at. So if I grab this corner now and just push that back into there, get a full frame again. Let's look at that in rendered view. And if we were to render that out, 
we already get a pretty funky looking scene. Now you can see the textures have not imported brilliantly onto the car. So that's what we need to sort out now. Um, we're pretty much just going to make our own textures for this as an excuse to learn some new texturing skills. So let's come over to our shading tab. You can see, look, this is all, all fucked up. So our car paint on the body, that's what we're going to start with. Let's just select all those nodes and delete them because they're not working anyway, it doesn't matter. So let's add a new material output and we'll start from scratch. Okay, so let's just go for a diffuse first. Actually, we'll just use a, a principled just to make it easier. Okay, so got that, I'm gonna make it a nice red. And if you want, you could literally just leave it like that. <laughs> just a nice simple red, uh, but we're gonna do a little bit more than that. So let's turn up the metallic on it. Turn down the roughness a little bit. And now we get a more metal looking, a more shiny red. And then we're gonna do the same technique we did for the road down here. So we're gonna add a Musgrave texture and a bump node. Put the Musgrave into the height of the bump node, not the normal, and then the normal of the bump into the normal. Wait for that to load. And you can see we get this really <laughs> weird looking. And if you wanna go for something abstract, well, there you go, you can do that. Uh, let's, so I'm gonna turn down the scale on this like, way down. So like, yeah, like that. So 0 0.05 I've got. And I'm gonna muck around with the detail a bit. So if you want like a tight change there or a more of a diffused. And you also got the dimension to similar. So I'm gonna bring that down to there. And I'm gonna leave that bottom one. I don't know what it does. What, what does it do? Oh, kind of similar to scale. Uh, and so now we've got, we've just got this kind of gradient look. It kind of looks like the sun's hitting it from different angles, the light's changing it, whatever. So we've got a pretty decent little texture there. Um, now, what we also need to bear in mind is that we're, we are going to do the final rendering cycles, not Eevee, or at least I am. You can stick with Eevee if you want, if you think your laptop's not powerful enough for cycles. We're going to switch over to cycles. I'm going to use GPU compute. I mean, instantly you can see how much pair that is. Uh, I can't really just do a quick rendering cycles. Um, and in cycles, you need to tell it a lot more of what it needs to do itself, like you know things like refraction and stuff. Um, sorry, I need to keep taking moments to think. Let's make that a little darker. Um, yeah, so we're going to tell it more to give more reflections. And the way we're going to do that is going to add an add shader, which is just a way to mix shaders in. Add another one, so we can just duplicate that. Shift D to duplicate, and we're going to add in a couple nodes here. So we're going to add refraction. Sorry, not an ad shader. No. Yeah, an ad shader. I'm really confusing myself. I'm just going to add that in there, that refraction node. And then plug that in. And you can see we get some refraction in there now. And let's add in a glossy node as well. So we get more of a gloss because cars are pretty glossy. And now we need to change the color of these. So we're looking at a red because we've got a red car. And let's change our refraction to be slightly red as well. Cool. So let's also turn up the roughness a little bit on that refraction so we absorb a little bit more light. Let's go for uh, 0.15. Cool. And now we get kind of a more natural metal that's taking in light, it's reflecting more light. Um, yeah, it's, it's a quite a nice little texture there. And we're going to repeat that process for a lot of the stuff in this. So I'll make that bigger if you want to take a screenshot or pause it so you can see that set up. Okay. Uh, 
Um, if I'm going too quick, you know, just go back. You don't need to keep up or whatever. Or maybe I'm going really slow, who knows. Uh, okay, now if you are still using Eevee, um, you might see you're not getting any reflections or anything. So you just want to turn on all of these. So turn on occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections, and then you'll get better results. But we're sticking mostly in cycles. Okay, uh, so now we also need to fix different parts of the car. So we need to change these rims out um, to be uh, more metal looking rims. And we need to do these disc brakes in there. So we're just going to do the same thing pretty much. Uh, oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't notice that before. So the tires are actually fine. It's just the rims we need to do. Hmm. I didn't think it was like that before. Uh, so the tires and the rims are actually seem to be the same object. They're not separated. That's fine. Okay, so let's come over to our materials here. Uh, so we've got rim and tire already. So the tire is broken. So let's let's delete that then and make a new material. And we'll just use a, a diffuse on that. Just a simple diffuse. Uh, make it quite dark. Make sure that the used nodes is on. Uh, and then let's go to rim. So rim has nothing. Let's also make sure new use nodes is selected. So there we go. So we can just instantly darken that. They've already separated them as different material objects. So let's keep that kind of bright. This might be different for a different car model you're using, but you know, follow along with the techniques as best you can. Uh, so let's just muck around with these things. Let's make it not very rough, really metallic. Uh, okay. Let's go back over to cycles. See what we're looking at. Okay, so that's really dark. Now I don't need to render this whole scene because all I'm looking at is the rim. So if I just press Control B, I can. Oh, I have just broken something. There you go. Come out of edit mode. Control B. That gives you a box select that you can just hover over that area, and now it's only going to render this tire, so it'll be a little bit quicker. Okay, so let's brighten that rim up then. So we want that to be kind of a nice silver. Let's just go all metallic, lower roughness. Okay. Uh, and let's just do the same thing. We're going to add an add shader, then some refraction, and some glossy. To another add shader up there. Let's turn up the roughness on that just a little bit. Turn down the roughness on that one. Let's get a darker color on both of them. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay, I'm happy with that. So press Control Alt B if you want to get rid of that selection. And you see it's done it for all the rims. Thankfully, the modeler has, the original modeler has separated them all. So one material will affect all the rims and stuff, as long as you're not deleting the materials and making new ones and working off the original broken ones. Okay, uh, I'm just going to try something quickly. So I think if we use a mix RGB node, Um, no, how did I do that? Okay, let's ignore that. Just leave that as it was. Uh, so let's check in on our disc brakes. So use nodes, make sure that's selected. So we've already got a material here that's not too broken, just a simple one. Let's make that a, uh, let's give it orange disc brakes because those are really cool. Um, that might be orange, that might not be orange. Is that orange? I think that's orange. Yeah, that's orange. 
a uh, little bit metallic, uh, but higher roughness. Uh, control B, select that area. Cool, some nice funky orange disc brakes. Control Alt B to come out of that box select. Let's go to flat camera view. Cool, we're looking quite, we're looking pretty good. Um, so let's continue this trend of just fixing the materials. So we've got over here. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's good. I thought I crashed then. Oh, while we're here, let's just let's save. <laughs> we don't want to crash. Save if you haven't already. Um, okay. So this mirror, we want that to be really reflective because it's a mirror, and it's going to be really difficult to get nice and close on that, isn't it? Let's use the camera view. Okay, so let's uh, see if there's a material already for it. Um, car paint, that's the one we've already made. Body map, GSL chrome, rear light, logo, exhaust, blinkers, license plate. Okay, so let's make a, a new material then for the mirror. So just press that plus icon there. And that will select make this new material. Then press new. Let's call that mirror. Uh, and let's select in edit mode all these faces that make up the mirror. Select that mirror material we just made and press assign. That will make only those faces the new mirror one. So we're just going to make this a simple glossy. into an add shader, no roughness, so it's super effective. Oh, refraction, not another glossy. There we go, so that's just gonna reflect that a bit better. Okay, so now it's reflecting what's behind it. So let's jump over to cycles. look at that yeah, so we're getting that reflection of the car in the uh, in the mirror okay looking pretty good I'd say it's probably looking better than my uh, original one I did that's because it's the second time around I'm doing it <laughs> okay so something else I noticed on this model um, this will be the last thing will be done and then if you want to keep fixing stuff on the model then you can is this uh, fuel cap has nothing on it, it's just blank, right? Um, so Dodge Challengers have uh, this on their fuel cap. That's kind of, that's what they look like. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So come to edit mode. If you just use a circle select, which is C, so you can just click in the middle there, you'll select all those faces. Um, let's make a, another new material. So the plus icon there, new let's call that fuel cap so we don't lose it yep assign those faces you can see they've just changed so now they're looking at this material delete the no not delete it if you just select the principal bsdf again if you're using node wrangler press Control t and that will give you a image mapping automatically um, or you can just add in an image texture and that but this does it with the mapping press open um, and find an image of that challenger fuel cap and it it pastes it on there um, you can literally just search uh, dodge challenger fuel cover and you know it will come up it doesn't need to be a png it doesn't matter we're going to crop it out that's the one i've used grab one that's kind of flat looking dodge challenger fuel cover uh, okay, now we're going to jump over to the UV editing here. Uh, so UVs are maps of your objects. So let's just select all those. Let's uh, take a look at it in the material view. 
So yeah, select all those faces. You see they jump up here. And if we then select them all again, we can just scale that shape down and make it cover there. Cool. Uh, so we can also add some depth to that. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that in a tiny little bit. Uh, so if I grab the uh, the knife tool, which I should be able to. Okay, so I can't do it in the UV menu. That's cool. Uh, we'll do it here. You just grab the, the knife tool, which is K. Uh, outline that fuel cap. Just kind of the way, same way you'd row or something in After Effects. Annoyingly, you can't seem to be able to do uh, like bends, like curves. You have to do it in straight lines, which uh, is frustrating. But it's better than nothing. I mean, this is just a tiny detail anyway. Cool. Then press Enter when you're done. Uh, I'm going to use Circle Select again. Select all these interior faces. I'm just going to extrude them. So press E and extrude a little bit, maybe scale it in a bit. Just so we add a bit more depth to that fuel cap. So it actually looks like it's coming out a bit more. Just a little detail, not something you have to do. Cool. So now we've got fuel cap, rims, orange brake discs, car, mirror. Uh, while we're here, we can probably grab that interior mirror. Um, and assign that to the mirror we made earlier. So if you just press this icon here, let's find that mirror material we made. There we go, mirror, assign. There we go, so now that's that too. Let's take a look at cycles. Looking at pretty cool. Got a really nice reflection there of the car as well on the uh, on the ground. Okay, let's check up on the uh, chat and stuff. Um, 3D, if you don't see it, you don't worry about as many photo frames. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how it works. Okay, save yourself time. Cool. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just render it out there. You've already got a really lovely looking scene. Um, just to save ourselves some time, uh, also a really handy tip for you to know. If you come up to your render settings, uh, sorry, this one, and go to Film, uh, and then press Transparent, then it won't render the HDRI, but you'll still get all the reflection data, which is what we want. Um, so, And then you can see kind of what in your scene isn't being filled a lot easier. Really handy little tip. And that will stay for um, Eevee as well. OK, so if we come back to our example image, we are looking at Let's see what we've we got. So we've got these barriers here. We want to make these road barriers just to uh, fill the scene up some more because uh, most roads will have these barriers. OK, so what I kind of do for these as well is I'll just kind of Google something that's based around what I'm looking at. So like um, American Street uh, Night. And then you can kind of look at all these different inspiration images of what American streets look at at night. So that's kind of, that's sort of what we're going off of, even if it's a really low res image. Uh, and we're just going to make up these barriers. So this is where our modeling is going to come in. So let's make a new collection. Uh, let's call that uh, road barrier. I can't spell today. Cool. Let's twirl down these ones. Uh, our scene and challenger collections and let's lock them off so we don't do anything back so and let's make them invisible so now we're only looking at this collection um, don't know what's going on there that's weird okay so let's just look at the middle of our scene uh, and let's take a look at a, a road barrier not that uh, these kind of things. Okay, so always use some kind of reference image if you're 
doing something that's based off real life. This is the image I used earlier. This is a really handy little sort of diagram of a rope barrier. So you can see we've got this kind of angled look here, and then we've got these cubes on the back. So for this, I'm going to use a plane, and we're going to use two cubes for these bits here. Okay. So let's make add a new plane. Let's rotate that so RX90, so it's flat. Uh, and I'm going to make it really, really thin. Uh, and I'm going to just make that a bit bigger because we're working in a really small space by accident. <laughs> uh, okay, make it yeah, make it really, really thin. Like that. Let's bring it up a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to add a solidify modifier. So come over to the modifiers tab with your object selected. Add solidify. Uh, let's just make that a bit thicker. And I'm going to come to edit mode now and select the bottom edge and then come here. Okay, so kind of angles out a bit. So I'm going to press extrude, E for extrude, bring that down, extrude again and again, again there, and then we'll lock it off there. Okay, now let's grab this top edge because that's way too tall now. Let's bring that down a bit. And maybe. Yeah, okay. Let's grab that bottom one. Let's bring that up too. There we go. So now we've got that, we've gone all the way through it. And we've got that kind of start of a road barrier. Uh, okay, so now we need to do the all the connecting bits. So let's start with this bit. So let's use a cube, mesh cube. Let's uh, position it at the end here, scale it down to uh, be kind of the right size. So we've got this middle bit and then it gets bigger at the top and bottom. Okay, so let's put it in there, get it in the right position. So there we go, so we've got that middle bit. And let's go to edit mode, grab that top face, and I'm gonna press E.01. That goes to the bottom, E.01. That's gonna extrude both of those sides by 0.1. And then I can grab both those top edges, S, scale, Z, Z axis, and scale them up. And then they'll match. Now, what would have happened if I just tried to extrude them both at the same time? If I grab that one and that one and press E.01, they'll both extrude in the same direction. That's not what we want. So we need to do them individually, E.01, E.01. Grab them both, then scale them, and they'll go proportionally. Cool. Now I can grab both of these edges that have been made here, extrude them out, get them connecting, make sure they don't clip. Cool, let's grab these ones at the back and let's go E.035. Cool, and I'm gonna scale that in on the Y a bit, pop that there. Again, make sure it doesn't clip. Okay, so now we've got these edges up here. You can see it comes out there as well. So really handy tip when you're in edit mode, if you grab a face or an edge or anything and control kick, control click another one, it will select the root to that next point. So if I want to go over here, select all three of these, instead of going one, two, three, I can go control to there and it will select all the ones in between. Uh, I just shift click that one and shift control and then we get that one. We're going to do the same on this side, so shift, shift control, shift shift control, and I've got all these, and I'm going to go E.05, and we get that fully extruded, oh, no, I just did exactly what I said about, so we need to do them each side one at a time, E.05, oh, what am I doing there, I just broke something, shift, shift control, E.05, Come out the other side. Yeah, so I just perfectly demonstrated why you do these one at a time. 
the sides. And then if you want to scale them proportionally, you can come back round, uh, select all those, and uh, scale along the X, and they'll scale proportionally. Cool. So that's one bit. So now we've got the other bit that comes out the bottom. So let's add an edge loop in the middle about there. So control R for an edge loop, and then you can position it where you want and click again. Let's grab uh, all these bottom faces here and let's extrude them down to kind of there-ish. When you're moving something, if you hold shift, it will do it slower, less sensitive, and if you do click, it will snap to the grid. Handy tip. Okay. So if we look here, you can see there's a bit of an indent there. So what I can do is just grab this edge here, this edge here, and let's uh, kind of move them up there a bit. Then SX, scale that in on the X axis or whatever axis you're working on, and we'll get that indent. Cool. Okay, now if you want, uh, what we can do as well, sorry, got ahead of myself. So let's duplicate that, Shift D, X, move it along the X, take that there. So we've got a matching edge of the road barrier. Now, if you want to smooth these out, we can do apply that solidify modifier. So it will bake that into the mesh. So now you get a 3D mesh instead of a 2D mesh with a fake modifier on it. If you grab one of these edges and press control B, that will bevel the edge. So I'll add in essentially a couple of edge loops and it will add that kind of gap between it. You can do multiple edges at a time if you need it to match. I'm going to scale in that top one as well. So we get a thinner edge. I'm going to do that along the bottom as well. If you haven't applied the solidify modifier, you won't be able to do this because it will still be a 2D mesh. So you need to apply it if you want to do that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to do that here as well. So let me delete that one I made down there because we don't want mismatching ones. I'm going to bevel both of these interior edges. So control B and bevel that. Then what you can also do if you want is you can go to your modifiers and add a bevel modifier. And that will just add some extra smoothing kind of around, around the whole mesh. Okay, so we don't need all these to be separate objects. We want them to kind of be one object. So let's add that duplicate and again, shift D X select all of them, then control J, and that would join them all to be one object. And now we can scale, scale it uniformly. And we've got our road barrier. So let's call that barrier. Oh man, I don't toy as much. My throat's killing me. Let's check the chat. Mm -mm. We doing still three people watching uh cool look good sorry if i'm fucking with your eyes and i go over to that chat screen it's the only way i can view it because my phone's obviously not playing nice all right let's unlock sorry unhide our rest of our scene uh that's going to be time consuming so i'm going to do a really handy little tip where we're just going to duplicate that entire row of barriers. Oh. Duplicate that whole row. Uh, let's maybe get one more. So it looks like it needs one more at the end. Uh, and I'm going to make them all one object. So select them all, all those ones before that curve and sorry, after that curve and press Control J. And let's call that uh, barrier curved. So we need to curve that along that edge. So what we're going to do is if we go to shift A, add a new curve. So curve Bezier. You should all be familiar with Bezier curves because of Premiere and stuff. So let's make that up so we can see it, scale it up, make it really big. Now these are sort of like nulls where we don't really see them. You don't see them in the uh, final render, but you can use them to do loads of really handy stuff. 
Um, you can use them as like dollies, so you can make a curve and then tell a camera to follow it or any other object. Um, so if you go to edit mode, you can grab any of the points, grab it or rotate it, and you can just adjust that curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that curve follow that edge. So the curve's going to come round the edge and follow that path that the barriers need to go on. Cool. So let's call that uh, barrier uh, follow curve. I don't know. So let's go down to that barrier we made, this one here, where it's all joined together. Um, bring that curve down to the level of the barrier. Add a new modifier onto the barriers, and it's the curve modifier. And in the eyedropper tool, point it to this curve we just made, so the barrier follow curve, and you'll see it snapped to that curve. So if we come up here, now when we move, this object, you see it follows that curve, it wraps around it, which is exactly what we need. So let's just do that up to there. We can now still move the curve as well because it's not baked. So you can just move that curve and bang, you've got your curved barriers that follow the road. Super handy. Now you could just do that for the whole road. If you've got a longer road, just make one curve and then make a really long barrier and tell, tell the whole thing to follow it. That's one way you could do it. I've just done it for that curve because that's all we're using. Oh, somehow our ground plane is clipping again. Let's move that down a little bit. Cool, so let's jump back to our camera view. We pretty much lose sight of it anyway, of the barriers. If you want to see them more, we could uh, move our camera. So let's, uh, let's grab the camera, lock it to the view. So N to bring up that panel, then view, lock camera to view. Uh, I'm going to need it. Ooh, so let's lock to view there. Uh, I kind of want to. We could always go up a bit so you can see the curve more. Obviously, this is all down to how you've done your scene. You don't have to have done mine exactly. You can do whatever you want. Go for a low angle, go for a high angle, build a totally different road, build a massive road, do whatever. I'd rather see loads of different variations. You know, don't make a red car, make a yellow car. Do whatever. Okay, cool. So now we kind of see that barrier curve around. You see the road curve around more. Uh, let's turn that lock camera to view off. Let's lock off the camera again. Get one window. Uh, so now we need to make our ground plane a little... Oh, you mother... bring that edge further out that way because we've changed the camera angle now so we can see more. Okay, and our rendered view in cycles, we're getting that so we can see the barrier. Cool, so let's make the material for the mat. We're at an hour 17, not bad time. Uh, I'm just going to make it super metallic back in uh, map preview. Uh, I'm going to make it darker. Uh, kind of low roughness. Oh man, my throat kills. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing we've done before. So add an add shader. Another add shader. Refraction. Uh, and actually we only need refraction so let's just add that and i'm going to add a fresnel mode as well into the face of the ior just so we get some more kind of realistic reflections turn the roughness up a bit as well uh, cool okay uh oh. I 
that's what we're looking like. Looking pretty good. Um, I'm just checking if there's what's that? Nothing. Okay. So if we turn our HDRI back on, so we can see our background. We're kind of looking at that now. So now our issue in terms of composition is that we can see the edge of that background, which is kind of annoying because we don't want to see that clip. You want to... All right, let's go back to moving our camera. I always spend so long just mucking around with the camera and doing like such low levels. How have I done it in the... Uh... So they're kind of making us a bit more level with the car. Yeah, okay. And I've just duplicated all these barriers. Actually, let me just join all these. So we've only got one, two objects to deal with there. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate, uh, move that kind of up there. And they will still follow that curve. There you go. So it does go off the road, the barrier, but that just moves to the other side, but it doesn't matter too much because we kind of lose sight of it anyway. Cool. So pretty much only got one couple more things to add. Um, so we need to add some lights just to fill up the scene a bit more. So let's go to our layout. Um, so I'm going to add in the headlights first. So light spot uh, RX90 to make that flat. Bring that up over here. Let's bring that to our car. Now the Challenger has got four headlights, which you can see in there. Okay, so let's bring that down to level and then rotate that headlight round. Bring that in there. Nice, so that kind of match as well. Let's look at the material so we can we want to catch that light so turn up the power of the light uh, duh, duh, duh. let's use EV real quick so we want really really strong light which we're not seeing at all for some reason why aren't we seeing it Up to like 300. Uh, there we go, there it is. You kind of see it there. Make it a bigger size so it gets close to the car. Turn the blend down a bit. You can change your muck around with all these different settings. Let's get a bluer light. Uh, and I'm going to turn down the influence of the HDRI as well. So if I come to our world settings, you can change the strength of it. So I'm going to put that down to 0.65. Mm, maybe 0.35 so we get a bit darker scene okay there we go you see the light stronger now bear in mind um cycles light is is less sensitive cycles is much less sensitive to light than ev is so you need much stronger lights so you know something that's 300 might need to be 450 for cycles um cool so that's that kind of like sort of set let's duplicate that for that headlight and let's grab both of them and move them there. Let's make that match. Bring that headlamp down there. There we go. And let's bring all those lights we just made into the Challenger collection as well so that they're in the right place. Uh, let's select them all. Then the Challenger null object parent object. Cool. Uh, oh no, other way around. Null, then all these. 
objects, parent objects. Oh, you motherfucker. Objects, parent objects. There we go. So now if we grab that null that we made originally, the lights stick with the car, which is handy if you're planning on animating it. Okay, so let's take a look at cycles with those lights now. So not overly strong, but uh, you can kind of see this subtle effect it has. Okay, I'm going to just use EV to quickly bash this stuff out. So I don't want to select these lights, so I'm just going to lock them because they're going to get in the way. Lock down the lights. Let's jump to edit mode as well come to your materials and uh, we're gonna make a new material real quick for these headlamp areas uh, I'm gonna call that uh, headlight map uh, so I'm gonna use my circle select and faces so faces three circle select there 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 and there model has done a really good job of making sure all these faces are really easily selectable okay uh, assign them to that headlight material we've just made um, and we're gonna make that a emission shader instead of the principal really strong uh, let's make it slightly blue so we kind of get that what's it called Xeon Xenon 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 light look there we go so now we've got light coming out of the actual headlamps as it looks um, as well as the lights from the, you know, the, the actual lights that are in the scene. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's jump back to cycles. Okay, so that is, um, that's pretty much that. That's all of it. Um, that's that whole, that whole image done um even better i would say because i didn't do the brake discs or these rims properly i did add an emission to that backlight bar as well but i'm not a massive fan of how that came out um and so you're pretty much re ready to render from there so you can just whack f12 get it to render save out your image um but it might be a bit noisy so a way you can prevent that is if you come down to this view layers down here uh turn on denoising and I put the radius up to like 16 and that's just going to remove some of the noise you get in cycles. Oh, excuse me. That's what the coke I've been drinking. Excuse me. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's, that's that bit pretty much done. Um, but I did say if you guys stuck around to the end, which let's check. We've got two viewers. We've lost. We've lost one person. We lost one one viewer. Um, I did say I would show you how to do this, which is super easy because <laughs> uh, we've done all the work already, pretty much. Um, okay, so let's. We need to be able to access that, so we can lock everything except for the camera, and the car null. Okay, so we're going to use Eevee to do that. And pretty much <laughs> we're just going to turn on auto keying down here. We add that. We're going to also bring up, oh, oops. Let's bring that back. So we want the timeline there. And we want to get a. Ah, you've done it again. <laughs> uh, we want a new window there, which is going to be a graph editor. All right, so let's press I on the null. So selecting the null for the car that's controlling everything. I, location and rotation. So we've got new keyframes for that. And then it's literally just a matter of going down the timeline with auto keying on and just moving your toy car, rotating it, going further down the timeline, moving it up, rotating it. 
let's go another 30 frames, move it, rotate it, so it's kind of, it's probably going to do a drift there. Let's go another 30, bring it down, rotate some more. Uh, over here, rotate it. And then if you go back and watch that, you've got an animated car. Now you're going to want to muck about probably with that just to make it look a bit closer, maybe bring these all in close together. Oops, so it goes a bit quicker. We'll change around the rotation so it looks more like it's got actual physics. Uh, and then you grab your camera um, and auto keying's on, so any movement with the camera is going to register. So what you can do is literally play the animation of your car moving and then just move the camera to follow it. Um, so you could just do this, you know, just have the camera follow it and it's going to record that whole animation. And yeah, you'll see that there, so that kind of looks really janky though. And that isn't actually what I meant to do. <laughs> I meant to use a different method for that. Uh, okay. Da -da -da. Mm -hmm. right. So we're just going to hand animate the camera again. So let's get another new window over here, make that see the camera. Okay, so I for location and rotation. Come along 30 frames. Let's move the camera down here. Let's say that way, make it in front of the barrier. Let's come down here. Let's get it over there. Get it to follow. 120 down there and there. And now you've got your camera is following your car. Uh, now, if we start the animation at 10 frames in and end it at 110 frames, then we won't see the start and end of the animation. So it will look more like we've just got the actual raw action. Uh, and then what you can do is if you, in the graph editor here, add some realism. So you've got the rotation stuff all down here. So bring in the modifiers tab. So there's this little thing down here, kind of looks like that arrow there. Bring that over, go to modifiers, select uh, X rotation, find that, so that's there. Add modifier noise, turn up the strength, turn that down. And what that does is add some shake to the uh, X axis and literally just repeat that for all of them. So go to Y, modifier noise, oh, there's Y. Turn that one up, turn that one down. And do it for Z, where's Z? Up here, modifier noise, that one up. That one down, maybe turn that one up a bit more actually. Uh, and you've got a crazy camera following the car. If you look at it and rendered. Ooh. Uh, looks pretty cool. Um, and now we don't need the graph editor anymore, so we can bring that all the way. Oh, fuck. I always do this. Oh no, I've made I've made like three. There's three graph editors. We only need the timeline. Grab the wheels of the car. Uh, and just make like two keyframes. So come to the rotation settings here so you can actually see it. Uh, add a rotation on wait, let's just find which one it is. Oh turn off auto keying. So I believe it's X, which is going to be that rotation, the way a tire rolls, make it zero. So I, hover I over that zero, one, two, arrow keys, go forward two frames. Type in 360, which is a full rotation, I again, and that's going to rotate that. Now we don't need to do it again and again and again. Just high, grab all those keyframes, press Shift E and make cyclic. And now if you were to watch that tire, it's going to be quite difficult, but it, it will spin indefinitely. 
and just repeat that for every single tire. So I on Y, one, two, 360, I, select them all, shift E, make cyclic. And now this tire, so go to zero, or 10 even, sorry. I on Y, one, two, 360, I, shift E, make cyclic. And our last tire there, I on rotation on Y, make that Z, I, one, two, 360, I, two keyframes, set them all, shift E, make cyclic. And now we're going to have some more realistic animation because the tires will actually be spinning. Now, these two front ones, for some reason, don't want to spin. Wait, is that one spinning? Start spinning. This is strange. This did this did it did speed before. Shift E, clear cyclic, make cyclic. Hmm. Strange. If the tires don't want to play nice, you can just always go through and actually manually duplicate those keyframes instead of I don't know why sometimes it just doesn't want to do the cyclic part thankfully every time you duplicate it it gets it gets quicker because you've already got it. just make sure you do it in multiples of two uh, there you go you've got a spinning tire now and do the same for that one grab all those shift D Ooh. shift D Oh look, it's coronavirus spreading. Uh, <laughs> ah, spinning tires. Really quick spinning tires. Uh, and then add a realism, go down to your uh, render settings. Uh, here, add motion blur. And then you've got blurry, blurry motion. Uh, you can probably turn the shutter down to like 0.2. 16 samples just to make it smoother maybe 0 0.15 uh, and let's just go for an extra step for realism uh, add a new null this is a really handy tip actually for anything to do with cameras in blender go to the start of the animation um call the null focus then go to your camera settings go down to there turn on depth of field and then you can select an object so select the focus null we just made there it is and now if i use that one and then that one Let's turn up the f-stop on the camera as well. So let's make it 1.8. When I use this null, what you should see is we get that controls the focus of the camera when it wants to work. Okay, so. Oh, why are you not working? Make it big so I can see it more. Uh, oh, do we need to turn on depth of field here? Maybe? No. It might just not be doing it. But basically, you can grab this focus null which your camera is attached to. And then do what we did earlier with the camera, where we turn on auto keying, uh, play the animation and grab the focus null, and then just kind of track it as best you can, maybe make a few mistakes back on purpose. 
and you'll see that focus now will follow it now you can see it better now and then what will happen is you'll lose focus kind of as you're trying to keep up with it the same way you would lose focus in real life um, and you you end up with this pretty slick looking thing you could uv map a license plate on the back the same way we did with the fuel cap if you wanted to i'm going to make that 100 frames um and yeah you get this car going along the road animation i've done that really quickly you can smooth it out a bunch more if you wanted to change up the sequence um, maybe turn on depth of field if you're going to do the cycles render as well for just a static image um, just because it will add that realism as well or you could do it in Photoshop if you really want um, instead if, if you'd rather do that if you're more comfortable with Photoshop but I mean uh, cool see you later Kieran have a good one um, we're pretty much done anyway that's it finalized I was just going to go over the render settings um, which are just Come down to your render, add an output location, file format if you want it as video, FFmpeg video, encoding, Troscor to MPEG4, H264, it's actually lossless if you have audio, AAC or no audio. Uh, set out your output location and then just render, render animation or control F12. Um, cool. Um, I think this one went well. We actually had some people watch it. Um, thanks for coming along guys uh, you can always go back and watch this if you need it um, drop if you're in the uh, blender forum group chat you know pop your stuff up in there um, of what you might want to see next week or you know whatever if you need tips and tricks or whatever drop me a message and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to help you out um, but that's that's it for today uh thanks for coming along i'll i'll see you later